Yo, today I want to go over Honkai Star Rail. Was it worth the hype after beating the main storyline, playing the game over the course of a week, both on my mobile and PCs? Let's get into it. So first things is the story. Is it typical? Is it post-apocalyptic? Was it boring? And I have to say Honkai Star Rail was a pleasant surprise because the Trailblazer is not your typical main character. He's actually a meme lord with the way he talks to NPCs and just engages with them. He'll poke fun at them and make fun of them. It is just one of the most interesting things I've ever seen because a lot of times these games take themselves heavily seriously. And with this one, you'll be making fun of old men and pretty much picking on children at some point. But another thing is that it rewards players for interacting with everything, whether it's trash cans, mailboxes, or whatever. There is a hidden storyline within each detail of Honkai Star Rail, and I found it very interesting. And it'll reward you with like little titles and achievements and everything. Overall, I think it's really awesome for those who love to explore every single aspect of the game. There's things for everyone. And then it goes into the combat. It's a turn-based RPG. Some of you might be like, hey, is this actually fun? What's the difference between the others? I think what's the most important part is one, yeah, there's a speed mechanic, but there's a lot of manipulation within the basic attack skills and ultimate, specifically in skills where you can push turn order or you can land elemental breaks and whatnot. And also the fact that you're not specifically hardcore tied to a team where, for example, you have to run all fire or all Erudition, Lightning, Ice, whatever. You can actually run whatever team you want. Ideally, you bring a variation. And what's most important is you actually manage your skill points, which will coincide with the fact that you can land better team synergies and land ultimates easier. I think what was really satisfying at the nearing like combat ends of the story when I was fighting against like the craziest bosses was when I knew how to alleviate my skill points and then land them all at once where I would land five tacks in a row and it would be some of like the biggest damage but also i'd be squeezing by a hair thin of hp in order to survive the next turn before another big wave of attacks and i found that really insane so some of the coolest stuff i experienced in there and then when it came to like synergies and team comps i found it insanely flexible Especially when I go like and see my peers, some people are building Sampo, Asta, Arlen, array of characters that some people would say are terrible, but work really well compared to like the settings and like ways that people put them into and a lot of free to play aspects because the free to play characters that you have can essentially beat the game. But what about RNG in the combat? The only RNG factor is that there are going to be weaknesses where you can land frozen or you can land like extra shocks with lightning or you can land burns, you can land slows. That is like a chance effect. There's some characters that can raise it, but outside of that, you can't miss, which is really cool. Then it goes into the progression. Is it actually easy? Is it something everyone can do? I think the most confusing part for progression was not knowing that you can only build a limited amount of characters, at least four in the beginning. And the only reason why I say four is because of the fact that you're gated on resources, which is stamina, which you will be using to level up characters for the most part, whether you're gathering EXP, gold, or light cone EXP, which is weapon EXP. But overall, the progression was straightforward because it's really easy to understand. I think just the limiting factor was kind of annoying. And this goes into the RNG of gear, which will be alleviated more so in the later game. But in the beginning half, gear really isn't important, which is the nice part. In fact, you can probably ignore gear grinding until level 40. A lot of the game will provide you decent enough gear to get through the first half of the stories and just upgrade those, which I found nice. So the story aspects and the progression, it's straightforward and it's not overly complex as other games would seem out to be. So Honkai Star Rail story combat progression was really fun. But what about the monetization and free to play aspects? Well, I haven't spent a single dime on the game going through the story. I did reroll to get an account that I like, but I don't think it really matters. There's people who's already beating the story with the base characters. And as far as the monetization goes, it's the same thing as its predecessors. You can do like a monthly pass or whatever, but honestly, all it does is speed up your progression. 
beating the game in a week or beating the game in two or three days, it doesn't really matter because the newest game content isn't going to be coming out for weeks, if not months. To be honest with you, it's not really worth to spend money on Honkai Star Rail if you're only technically beating the content a little bit faster. And in the end, you hurt yourself because you're just playing the waiting game of when content next releases. Not to mention like the achievement section, there's going to be the intergalactic like notebook thing, which will ride you an insane amount of gems and trailblazing EXP, which is going to be like your trailblaze level, which is your account level and everything. And it really just goes hand in hand as long as you're spending stamina, which the game definitely tells you to do, you'll be for the most part really successful. And as long as you're following the guidelines within the intergalactic notebook thing, you'll be well on your way to essentially level up your trailblaze EXP and go throughout the game. For those who are wondering, how do I get my trailblaze EXP leveled up so high? Follow the notebook do some quests and just spend your stamina. You'll be on your way. But like I said, take your time. Don't rush the game because that's where, you know, you'll have more enjoyment just interacting with all the different objects. What about the most important thing once you beat the story? Is there an actual end game? Will you be rewarded? Well, the two main game modes, which is simulated universe, which is a roguelike mode, is unlimited content right now, as far as I can tell, beating all of the worlds from right of this video. I would say is an insane standpoint and even then there's like so many different scenarios you can make broken build which is unique to honkai star rail that simulated universe not to mention the forgotten hall which is going up to like 15 to 12 levels and then there's like the memories of chaos which further increases the difficulty and honestly speaking it's some of the craziest content because there's so many constraints you can't just wall the enemies and tank them out you have to beat them within a set amount of turns and it'll really test whether your free-to-play account can beat it but i think that's the two aspects that makes the game insane and then we're not even covering the fact that there's so much lore and layers between the different characters you could really just unlock every single achievement get every single title and just find every single nook and cranny of the game because even though it's not an open world map i feel like they put more effort into hiding things within honkai star rail the easter eggs are absolutely insane the things that you can discover the story aspects there'll be like some characters who are going through an internal life crisis you're saving them from poverty and all sorts of things, helping a little girl with her teddy bear and how that teddy bear is worth more than you absolutely think. That is like a treasure of its own. And I have to say, it's really some of the funnest stuff, not even like beating the bosses, but discovering how intimate that you can get between the characters and how they actually become who they are. Like Hook, one of my favorite storylines, and also Clara with like the little robot. One other thing that I wanted to cover though was the mobile friendliness of the game. Can you actually play the storyline and go through everything? Yeah, you absolutely can. Of course, it's a better experience on PC where you can see everything in high fidelity, but I was doing my dailies and weeklies, doing boss runs and actually enjoying the story just as much on my phone as I would on my PCs. It's a bit of a battery hawk at some times, but you know, just plug it in and you can play the game. And it was running absolutely fine on my Galaxy S10 Plus for those who are wondering what did I use. Regardless of the fact, I thought it was completely playable. And that was one of the most insane parts because being able to actually play this game on the go whenever I wanted and actually enjoy the story and interact with everything and never losing my progress because sometimes I'm just out and about. But yeah, to me, it met the hype mostly because there was actual end game that was fun. The storyline was unique in its own ways. The combat is a lot deeper. I think I'm selling it short on how fun it is because it's not just about the weakness system. It's not about just, you know, creating like the most broken team that you never let your opponents attack. It's about finding the team synergy where you know when to save your attacks, when to release all your attacks, when to defend and just really feeling that sense of, aha, I finally beat this boss after using my brain instead of brute forcing it with like overpowered characters, which 
you'll see a lot of the times in other games. But yeah, to sum things up, it's a unique take on the turn-based RPG, keeping it fresh and fast-paced. My only critique is the fact that you'll probably be sinking an insane amount of hours digging through the dialogue and story, and just really getting to know everyone, and the cutscenes, they aren't skippable. But once you really just enjoy what the story has to offer, and you understand that this world is a lot more complex than it is. It's not you're just going against the Aeon or the Stellaron or Fragmentum. In fact, there's a lot of political moving factors where sometimes there doesn't seem to be a right side. And most of the time, it's better to just poke fun and just sit in the sidelines. But I think the most fun part about Honkai Star Rail is how you can really create your own adventure and create your own main character differing from other games where it takes itself too seriously. But overall, I think my favorite part about Honkai Star Rail was the complete package and how satisfying everything felt at the end of the day. But yeah, I'll also paste some codes in the description and in the comments in case it helps you out as we flow on things. If this review helped you out, let me know down in the comments or if you have any feedback on how you feel about Honkai Star Rail and how you are playing the game and what characters you guys are using. I'm really curious. Anyways, if you made this part in today's video, consider subscribing, dropping a like, leaving a comment, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram in case you want to see me IRL and what I do there. Once we have 40k subs, we're doing a giveaway. Thanks so much for watching. Have yourself a fantastic day and see you guys in the next one.